in the skills of war and was recruited at 19 years old as a centurion. My first job in the army was to torment captured enemy personnel until later when I was commissioned to fight on the front lines. I never forgot what I learned from the gladiator trainers on how to detach body parts from men swiftly while in battle. I had become so good in fact that Tiberius asked my grandfather to let me participate in the annual clash of the animals which was the goriest of battles in Rome at the time. Marcos said. This battle started off with gladiators being released to fight each other for the first five minutes and then wild hungry animals of all types would be released into the Colosseum to add even more excitement as the crowds rent as gladiators swoon into battle. But, not I. Marcos replied. I would just stand unshaken as my sword pierced through the flesh of foes bruising the heads of both man and beast. Then the wild evil bulls were released piercing the hearts of men with razor sharp horns putting to shame the owners of the gladiators as they plummeted into death's valley. Marcos said. I was the last man standing as I raised my sword in the air with victory. The people fell in love with me after that day and Tiberius privately insisted that I fight with him in battle during the celebration that was held in my honor. Tiberius toasted to my victories as Augustus Caesar my grandfather looked toward me in admiration. I felt as if Augusta began to have a change of heart but to his demise he became fatally ill shortly after that day. Some say that he might have been poisoned by a jealous Tiberius. Marcos sighed. I quickly became a young office cadet in Tiberius army as my fame traveled throughout the land. The people called me the Lion of Rome and this title did not settle well with Tiberius. Tiberius Caesar jealousy grew the more as he felt like that title was his and not some mixed bred Roman that was half Egyptian and Greek. Nevertheless, I made an excellent impression on my commanding officers as I plunged first into battle from the front lines. Marcos said. I enjoyed the rights and privileges of war and all of its spoils as we marched them back to the gates of the palace. I much like my mother was invited into the homes of many noble families to dine with them and talk about our exploits and conquest. When I turned 23 I decided to open up my own school of war for special units of the Centurion fighting force. This group was my special task force used for spying and infiltrating castles without setting off the alarm for an invasion. I was working my way up the political ladder too and Tiberius knew exactly what I was doing but he allowed me enough rope to hang himself. Marcos sighed. Tiberius Caesar in the beginning congratulated me for my strategic planning skills but soon he became weary and sought to daunt all my plans. Because he knew that I was loved by everyone and even the ladies of the court loved me so Tiberius was secretly outraged but afraid to display it at first. I was the true successor to the rank of Caesar and that's why Tiberius plotted against me from the very beginning of his illustrious reign as emperor. Marcos said in angry. Tiberius offered me the rank of general on my birthday in February if I could complete but one mission to build a fort along the Medway River where the people of Germania lived. Marcos said. I begin to hear ominous sounds in the background like air moving through a long deep metal drum canal as Marcos talked. I began to ready myself to fight to the death while we were moving through the unbearable heat in hell. Marcos had not missed a beat from his story despite what was going on around us. This was the first of many forts I was commissioned to do to keep my ears and mouth away from the council members and nobles of Rome. Tiberius plotted to ruin my influence amongst the people of Rome. Marcos said. Marcos started breathing aloud as he called back his life and times as a soldier in the Rome as he continued. He sought to kill my name making me a forgotten legend. Before this happened everything was going fine for my military career until I received word that my father was sentenced to death that following summer of 33 AD Marcos sighed. What did he do? I asked. Marcos of course became engulfed with sympathy and rage as he thought about the things he wished he could have done to be there alongside his father and mother.
Marcos continued. I requested a leave of absence so that I might go pay homage to my father but to my surprise my request was revoked by Tiberius. Marcos sighed. I in response to Tiberius gesture decided to leave Medway River and travel to Rome where Tiberius was waiting on me with his entire army to stop me in my tracks. The glory of Rome stood against me and my men and dared us to proceed in my conquest. I and my men were arrested for disobeying orders set by the Emperor Tiberius and thrown in a dungeon underground with the rats. Marcos said. I was forced to grieve for my family while being tormented with starvation almost until death. That is until one morning while listening the guards gossip about how Tiberius pulled the rugs of glory from under my feet to my surprise. As the guards laughed my face stiffened and grief turned to hate inside as I began to plot my escape route while catching and eating live rats to regain my strength. While down there I also met a gladiator that was once a great man in Rome, but he too disobeyed the orders of his chain of command and was sentenced to prison. Marcos said. After being on lockdown for several months I requested to send a message to the Emperor. In the letter I wrote of how I could bring great glory to Rome as its gladiator and eminence to his reign and credit to his majesty the Emperor. The Emperor was so moved by the passion of the letter he himself came down to the dungeon to visit me face to face. In the conversation Tiberius assures me that if I did bring great glory to Rome he would give me residence in his courts with great wealth. So I agreed but with my fingers crossed I promise not to cause any backlash against Rome. Marcos sighed. Tiberius afforded me the opportunity to be matched with a nameless gladiator to test out my campaign for Rome's champion. The battlegrounds of the match was held in a great gully surrounded by shielded guards. They chanted a famous saying, Accept those things which binds you to fate, destiny binds you to death. I only given a pitchfork to defend myself against a gladiator with a spear but still prove victorious. The news of this battle traveled throughout the Roman Empire against Tiberius wishes but just like I strategically planned while incarcerated. Marcos laughed. Tiberius made a personal commitment to be at my next bout in the Tiber River, this time against two bloodthirsty gladiators notorious in the world of gladiators. It was raining hard freezing rain that day to but, even in water I was able to fight with agility and precision as I outmaneuvered two larger men clutching onto their heads and ramming them against each other. Knocking both men into the water as I shoved my fist into their mouths almost effortlessly like trapped rabbits. Marcos sighed. I won again victoriously still fighting without a sword or equivalent weapon against my adversaries and managed to break the necks of two opposing forces. The Emperor looked on in disbelief as fear overshadows him now seeing visions of me standing over his defeated body one day. Marcos laughed. I had grown in muscle size by this time being feed better food to give me more energy for battles. Until I was ready for the battle at the Colosseum that held more than 20,000 screaming fans that would chant my name even the more. The music at these main events at the Colosseum would start to build as they said my name in sync with each strike of the bass drums. I had to fight everything from wild ferocious beasts to men on spiked chariots in that great arena. But, the most rivaling match was with the giant evil bull raised on the outskirts of Germania. This bull was the largest of its kind with shoulders over 6 feet from the ground weighing a whopping 3,500 pounds. It was the pride of the stock. This creature looked like a bison instead of a bull and it was mean as a viper ready to strike at anyone or anything that moved. Marcos said. This evil bull had massive bull horns three feet long that curved like razor sharps meat hooks. One touch from its horns and it was sudden death to its victims on contact. Its horns were even known to pierce the armor of a centurion soldier breastplate. This beast could not be controlled so they only fought him maybe once every four years. He was old and set in his ways. The evil bull ran right past me in a jealous rage toward the stands where the screaming fans cheered loudly my name Marcos, 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 as if they should be chanting his name. Marcos replied. 
The bull charged the crowd and managed to jump partly in the stands, but slipped backward as its hind hoofs failed to connect with the platform losing traction, it too was trying to escape. As the evil bull raised up from the ground red eyes and all looking straight at me like a red and white target sign as it charged full speed to his bull's eye. For the first time I was startled but maintained my ground taken an almost deadly wallop from the bull. That flew me in the air over 40 feet landing on my face dust clogging my mouth. Marcos said. That day I had finally met my match given another spear because the bull knocked the first one out of my hand with the impact of the blow. Tiberius looked on with a grimace smirk on his face in anticipation for me to meet my untimely demise. Still the crowd shouted Marcos, 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 as I stood to my feet readying myself for another deadly whack from the bull's head. Luckily, I was just missed from the pierce of this animal's three foot long razor sharp bull horns only to be banged up but not bleeding. The bull circled around me a few times before it completely stopped and started staring me down as if it was thinking to stab me to death with its malevolent horns. To everyone's surprise and amazement I roared and I roared at the top of my lungs charging the beast this time. Tiberius and the beast look on in utter disbelief as I plummeted my spear in the mouth of the beast. The evil bull took a few steps backward and fell dead to the ground. Tiberius stormed out of the Colosseum with his entourage as the people begin to shout, Marcos, the Great. Marcos replied. I received the title as the Great that day as the gladiator for Rome. Marcos said. Tiberius hated me the more because even as his slave I still was greater than he. Marcos said as he grinned. Tiberius was disgusted bawling his fist in utter abhorrence, spitting at the thought of my images in his mind no doubt as to rid himself of my taste of victory out of his mouth like poison. He only attended several more competitions until he was unable to watch me fight again. People said that he started to have nightmares of him losing the influential status over the people of Rome to me. Probably, because at every exhibition from that day on I would point my finger toward the emperor at the beginning of every battle as the people called my name. Marcos sighed. I was prisoner of Rome still at this time and after every match was locked up in a dungeon. Tiberius failed from power during this time folding under pressure from the people's disrespect for him and his political decisions. The truth is that he wanted me dead but my name was being mentioned too much everywhere he went so he could not have me executed for fear of the people's revolt. Tiberius in turn began to suffer greatly from his low self-esteem toward the people's personal opinions of him and became exiled. Marcos said. So I continued to fight leaving a legacy behind for my family's name but never forgetting about the man that ordered my father's death. Each time I entered the arena blurring with trumpets and clashes of cymbals I would swear vengeance to the hands that met my martyr father an undeserved death by sword. The day I was waiting for had finally arrived when given the opportunity to fight with any weapon of my choice because I now was the champion of Rome in all my greatness as a warrior. Marcos sighed. Tiberius had already confined me to my own private cell but with much better treatment and access to visitations, before he had been banished. I had become the glory of Rome all the while Tiberius' leadership was compromised forcing him to become a drunkard losing even more respect from his council. Shortly after the council decided to start meeting together without informing Tiberius, they eventually elected his successor right from up under his nose. Tiberius became almost powerless before he decided to give up his reign until he was totally banished. Marcos said. But, before his total demise he offered me off for auction to one of Rome's great generals but the council meet and had me sent back to Rome. As I returned to Rome, Tiberius nervously awaited in the shadow of greatness as he shook with every step I made closer to Rome's council. I knew he could hear the sound of my heartbeats occupy his mind mixed with the feelings in between the walls of Tiberius' palace and his heart as the noise of rejection climaxed to his bitter defeat.
Tiger is filled with hate by the very crowd chanting of my name was defeated leaving his office open for any facet to take his place as Rome's new emperor. After the emperor Nero was elected by the council, I was released from jail and offered freedom after eight years as a gladiator for Rome's Colosseum and two years as a centurion. I was freed as a centurion and sent to the front lines of the battlefield to fight the Germania soldiers. Marcos said. I remember being a tad bit overzealous in war like I had something to prove. Still bent on my revenge on Rome for what it had done to my family and my life. But, I knew the only way to defeat this empire was to build my own army. Marcos said. How did you do that, Marcos? I finally asked. I became a spy for the army of Germania while I was captured at the Battle of the Medway. Marcos replied. You a spy? I laughed. Why not? The government had murdered everything that I held close. They killed all that I loved and I wanted to see the glory of this empire crushed like glass to ashes and dust. Much like my life had crumbled to nothingness. Marcos replied. Just like me, huh? I said. I love nothing now only the sound of my name, Marcos the Great. Marcos shouted. We both laughed as he said that. Nero got wind of my heresy to his Roman government and had me ambush en route to Rome. The last time I received orders from Nero to ambush the enemy I immediately rode off into the night on horseback to meet with one of the chief officers of Germania, unaware that Nero had spies assigned to me. I had arranged a huge celebration to distract Nero's other men with partying and as his men are filled with drunkenness I left his fort to conspire against Rome. Nero's spies discerning my actions travel back to Rome informing Nero Caesar of my intentions against Rome. In retaliation the emperor ordered his top generals to assemble of his archers to post outside of the city of Rome where they lay in wait for my return. Nero then sends word for me to join him in a celebration in his honor to the rank of most distinguished general in his majesty's court. I being honored for the call quickly ordered my army to stay on post while I and a five-man team traveled on horseback to the city of Rome awaiting the festivities in my honor. Marcos said. Hearing the sound of drum music beating in cadence as I approached closer I didn't have a clue to my demise. As I puffed my chest out in my approval of the Emperor's most gracious gesture toward me, I begin to wave my hands at the musicians of the court as they play the most riveting triumphant music I had ever heard to in my life. The horns were blurring as I begin to smile away the shattered pieces of my life's experiences. Even my horse was trotting in sync to the beating drums as I and my small team of Centurion soldiers drew closer to the hill. I finally happy enough to appreciate life as I breathed the fresh air of Italy. I was content, I was finally pleased. Marcos sighed. That is until that moment when the archers showed their faces from the backs of the hills. They came raining down death from the tips of their arrows upon my men and me in a manner of seconds. Down to the ground we had fallen, Marcos, the Great, and his five men were no more but a distant memory. The news of his great fall traveled throughout the land as the people of Rome bitterly wept for me and Rome was never the same again. Marcos said. Germania knew that my fall had greatly weakened the pride of Rome and it was time for Rome's reign to come to an end. Marcos sighed. Chapter 11 Robert Powers Well my name is Robert Powers and I was born in a correctional facility for women in New York City. That's right. I said it. I was born in a prison cell while my mother was serving time for stealing. The parole board decided to keep my mother locked up for an additional three years for fighting another inmate that she almost beat to death. When I turned 18 months old they shipped me off to a foster waiting house in Queens, New York. So I was locked in jail with my mother the first year and six months of my life. They kept me there that long because my mother was supposed to be released before she got into that terrible fight with another prisoner. 
they said that the woman was jealous that my mother was getting out early because of me so she picked a fight with my mother to make her stay locked up longer. I sighed as I now told my story. Go on. Marcos said. I learned how to walk and talk a little while I was in jail and the nurses spoiled me often I was told because I was a handsome lad. After my mother was charged for battery in prison they removed her from the prison program that allowed her to be with me while she was locked up and I was left there by myself. I had no family there, no mother or father just me and the nurses that took care of me. What did your mother steal? Marcos asked. I was told she got caught stealing silverware and watches so that she could buy drugs, pills and cocaine from her boyfriend. He is my dad and she was pregnant by him when she got caught trying to leave the store. I told Marcos as I sighed. Please continue? Marcos asked. My mother was still doing drugs in jail because she didn't care that she was pregnant with me or if I was born prematurely. The doctors found drugs in her system I was told and moved her to a different wing of the prison where she could get clean from her drug additions. She stayed there until her water broke and was sent to the hospital where I almost died. I guess the doctor felt sorry for me and my mother so he requested that we be shipped to the women's correctional facility for mothers. That place was the only home that I knew since birth because I had to constantly move around after I left that place. Robert are you okay to tell me your story right now? Marcos sincerely asked. Yes I am fine to tell you my story because I am a champion. I replied. My mother loves me, I know she does and she even said I was a blessing in disguise when I was born. I was with her every day when she was locked up behind bars and I know she loved me back then. She said because of me she has changed her life, well that was until they released her from jail. I think I only saw her a handful of times in passing or on the train in the subway. She was always busy talking to somebody whenever I saw her so our conversations were short and sweet she liked to call them. My foster mothers told me that she only took care of me in jail because she had to and the guards gave her no other choice. So what happened when you got older? Marcos asked. I was in different foster care programs and told that I could never live with my mother again and my birth certificate said father unknown so they could not track him down. I saw many children just like me in those places that had emotional problems some had been abused by their parents and sent there. Some of the kids would run away from foster care and live on the streets when they got too old to be adopted by a new family. Others were kicked out of the program for fighting usually those children ended up joining gangs or going to jail. Those kids were jealous of me because I was always getting adopted by some older lady that believed I was her child. I said as I chuckled. But, I always messed things up by stealing jewelry or money to party with my new friends in the neighborhood. It wasn't my real family, it was like a substitute family. How can a substitute family really love me, really? So I was like a revolving door in and out of foster family homes and foster care facilities all my childhood life until I turned 13 and then the court started sending me to jail for boys. I remember this beautiful girl I meet on the streets one night, her name was Becky. She always had money to give me when I was hungry. She was so cool and calm. Becky didn't talk a lot though. I remember asking her one time where was her money coming from and she told me her boyfriend had friends that paid her. She didn't like talking about it much because she would always cry and rub her arms when I asked about her boyfriend. I saw him once he was driving a small grey Honda Civic and wore sunglasses at night. He was a weird looking skinny guy that liked wearing jewelry. He frowned at me when he saw us eating pizza in the Bronx one night. All I could think of was how did he find us and was he following us this whole time. As I heard those sounds again building up around us the sounds of sinister laughing in the background. What was that? I asked Marcos. 
those are demons listening to your struggles of life unfold. Marcos replied. Anyway as I was saying, her boyfriend blew the car horn twice and she went to him and he drove off. She left her bags and everything and went with him. He brought her back just as I was finishing my pizza and she crying her makeup was all over her face. She had bruises everywhere and when I looked in her eyes, all I could see was her soul yearning for help. She had nowhere else to go and the police would just send her back to some group home or shelter for a week. I never saw Becky again after that day and it was just me left alone again in the cold. Interesting. Marcos replied. The next morning I went begging for money underground at the train station in Manhattan, usually I had pretty good luck. I remember like it was my birthday I had just turned 14 years old that day and I wanted to celebrate with a cake or something sweet. I even told people that it was my birthday but still nothing, not even a penny. A few hours went by and finally I said okay I will take it from somebody. So I watched the streets for a few minutes waiting for a rush of people to start walking down the sidewalk during lunchtime on West 52nd Street and Seashore Drive. I usually didn't pickpocket by myself but I was desperate that day plus I was starting to get really hungry. That's when I saw my target. He was a middle aged man with a black knitted cap over his head I could tell he had cash on him. What did you do? Marcos asked. Quite. I insisted. I followed him and he didn't even have a clue. So I closed in on him while looking around to see if anyone was looking at me. Then he went underground, I thought he probably was just trying to ride the subway. I bumped up against his back like really hard and I grabbed his wallet and before I could take off he had me handcuffed. I started yelling at the top of lungs as he dragged me off to jail. He told me that today was my lucky day and that I would be getting three meals and a place to sleep for a long time. I was upset inside until I realized that I was going to have a meal on my birthday. As I was talking the sound of war started to grow even louder. I asked Marcos why everything was so loud. Because we are entering into a war zone. But. Never mind that now finish your story Robert because soon we will fight. Marcos replied. Well when I got off the bus there were guards all over the place I remember them saying, Alright boss come in we want all your clothes in this bag and shoes in this bag and tell me your identification number. Okay, so while I was locked up they tried me in jail because they thought I didn't know how to fight. I fooled them real good. They were whispering to themselves the plans they had for me while I was locked up with them. When the lights went out I was ready I thought until one of the guys creep up behind me with a pillowcase. Before he could get it over my head I smacked him in the nose with my elbow. There was blood all over the place and that's when the police guard finally came. I wanted to cry that night I was so scared, but I couldn't because there was so many users and abusers in the jail with me. I could not wait to get to a two man cell or just out of that place it was such an ugly and sick place. All I could see was a bunch of empty prison cells and good people that had a hard life much like me. Again. As I was talking we begin to hear growls in the background as the thick acidic smoke started rising. When I got to court the judge said, on behalf of the state of New York I sentence you to three years juvenile only because our records indicate that you haven't had a family all your life. Then she told me that she felt sorry for me after she read my records and family history. Make ready for war. Marcos whispered. As he quoted some special chant called religion. Religion. Time for war. Whose side will you fight for? 2000 years of prophesy. 7 with the beast. Look in his eyes and you will run. But, there's no place you can hide. If you go to the underworld. So you better stand up and fight. Fight for your right and your children, so they can eat of the tree, guarded by the angels. 
with seven heads and seven wings. Religion, 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 religion. So what happened next? Marcos asked. I had to yell at this point because of all the noise and sounds of war as we ready ourselves for battle. But I continued on with my story. Well, when I got back to juvenile I changed my life and decided to do my time and get out. My friends knew that it was something different about me because I stopped plotting on the new boys that came in and I stayed in the library working on my GED three years later the guards told me to report to the head office where the warden was and when I got there he told me I had three hours to out process. That was the first day that I really prayed for God to make a change in my life forever. Get ready for war. Here they come, Marcos roared. Chapter 12 Chaos During Marco's journey in the underworld he was known for being blessed with the heart of a king a survivor for a time such as this. To train Robert in the art of war against offenses inside his heart and in his environment. Because God uses Marcos in such a way that Robert is able to see the light inside himself. In the beginning there was darkness and chaos upon the earth until the word of God said, let there be light. Once light entered the earth's dimension chaos had to leave the earth. As a consequence darkness shared its space with day in a peaceful way, and darkness became rest. What happened here in this passage of the Bible is this, because light was introduced to a dead place, life was conceived as a result. Now then, is your life filled with chaos, sickness, financial pressures, mental anguish, and stressful rest? If so, speak to your situation and say this. Let there be light. As Marcos called upon the light his sword caught fire as he began to swing it against the foes of goodness and goodwill. The backbones of the chaotic rivals were broken and the weapons of the evil perceptions were loosened and put to shame as Robert separated them into pieces with a mighty sword of fire in his hands. The body parts of his victims flew in the air like trajectories from outer space and flight. The demons called upon reinforcements from the air and the grave like a blitzkrieg of evil decrees against Marcos and Robert. They came down upon them from the mountains and underneath the ground. They even came from the Black River. They swarmed them like a great mass of hungry insects but the flames of their swords consumed them all. A wave of fire spread out of the tips of their two-edged swords of truth. Then Marcos roared out, I'll build a wall of fire around us now. A large wall of fire began to prevail from the floors of hell as the ground shook in the magnitude of a 9.5 earthquake. Now the big demons were rerouted to them because the force of the earthquake grabbed their attention. For that reason they paused from the torture and terror they were inflicting on the people that were trapped for eternity and turned their attention against Marcos and Robert. A great siren noise sounded off in hell like it was warning all of hell of the attack what was taking place and all manner of evilness was awakened but Marcos and Robert stood their ground in their position. They planted themselves back to back as a ball of energy began to form around them as a form of protection. The sphere looked similar to water because it was a clear gas-like blob but the evil could not pierce it. That is the evil on that level because Baal and the dragon looked on from the top of the hill as their soldiers fought a losing battle. The demon generals kept yelling, charge, as they ran down on them from the caverns of hell seeking to sift them out of the bubble of anointing to ambush them. With the monster that lay wait for them underneath the ground. To their demise these military tactics failed, all of the works of iniquity causing the generals to lose many soldiers. As the generals reported back to Baal and the dragon that sat on the hill awaiting their situation reports they were beheaded on the spot for being defeated in battle. Baal then commanded his army to right and left flank Marcos and Robert to consume them but again they failed Baal. Baal had beheaded his main generals and was soon beginning to feel himself with even more rage. He had lost over 16 legions of demons as Marcos and Robert fought from that bubble. Baal and the dragon decided to go down to Marcos and Robert in hope of destroying the bubble of synergy.
They figured that it was their only wall of insulation against their diabolical forces. As Baal moved and the dragon hovered above them making ready to clutch the faces of Marcos and Robert. Baal knows that if his paws touched that bubble the poisons of its abomination would cause the bubble to burst. Just before he is able to touch the bubble a great mighty wind enters hell where they are all standing. Chapter 13 Eternal Light Power starts to build as compression almost pins Marcos and Robert low to the ground while still trying to fight off the repugnant beast. The massive supercell storm enters hell like a tornado but Marcos keeps fighting with even more intensity. Robert stops fighting for a moment as he looks on at the spiral cone dipping down from the sky as the wind shield builds even more. Then finally the tornado touches the ground consuming any and everything in its path leaving debris in the air. Demons are terrified as they run for cover trampling over each other trying to escape the whirlwind. Where is this great wind coming from Marcos? Robert asks. I don't know it's the first time I have seen it myself. Marcos replied. Oh no it's him the mighty one. The demons cried. The mighty one? Robert asked. It is the one that is and the one that is to come. The demons answered back in utter terror. Then a cloud of smoke and great glory begin to fill the place and the demons were all consumed by the power of the mighty one as his warring angels fought the evil spirits back with their swords of truth. The monsters wail in bitter sorrow screaming please to not torment them before the time. Marcos and Robert saw the glory of the Lord as he stood there hiding his face from them. They could not look upon him without being consumed by the powerful one's divine nature. Robert begins to cry senselessly as he continues to fight off the evil spirits clutching his ankles attempting to pull him away into darkness. But, Robert is not afraid because he is a champion and he has been given power. Robert doesn't quite know where this power has come from neither does Marcos but they both feel the glory entering them like a fountain. They become full of power as the demons retreat back into their dark places. Robert tries to talk to the Mighty One directly but is interrupted by one of the angels. Who is he? Robert asks. Marcos sighs. Even I know who he is Robert. Silence. The angel replied. He has met you here because he has great plans for you. Robert, Christ is the fountain of living water. He has also suffered and died. He will never reject you. He is your guide. The angel said. Well who is he? Robert asked. He must be Jesus the Christ. Marcos replied. Yes, you are correct. He is the Son of God the Father. He is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. Now Robert if you come to him he will revive your mind, soul and heart. It is precious to him. You are precious treasure to him. He is here because he loves you. The angel said again. After this took place Jesus and his angels were taken away by the smoke and Marcos and Robert were left behind but they were not afraid. The demons were still terrified and shaking even after the great departure so there was no backlash from the evil spirits. Marcos immediately headed in the direction of the gates of hell with sword in hand and Robert who was with him did the same. While they were en route Robert begins to wonder why the angel didn't talk to Marcos as much as it conversed with him. For the first time since Marcos was in hell it had never been as silent as it was at that moment. Marcos could almost read Robert's mind as they both walked in utter silence. Marcos looks Robert up and down from head to toe in reproach for not letting him enjoy the few moments of peace. Okay, I must tell you something, Marcos says. I am listening. Robert replied. When I found out that my father had been murdered because he became a Christian I started to hate the Christians so much to the point that I slaughtered them. I hated everybody wrong too. 
When I found out that my father pierced Jesus in the side and then became his follower I was nauseous. Marcos exclaimed. How can you follow someone that you help kill? This was absurd thinking so I didn't care to hear about the beliefs of their religion. One night I had a very bad dream but it was different from all the others. I dreamt of waking up in hell and burning forever in constant torment seeing all the faces that I slaughtered. I woke up in a cold sweat on the battlefield right before I decided to conspire against Nero the Caesar of Rome. By the end of that week I was in hell burning and fighting forever. Robert I know that I will never leave this place but you my friend will have another chance. Marcos sighed. But, what about you Marcos? Robert asked. My life has already been lived and I never repented for my sins and accepted Jesus into my life. I regret that every day I'm down here because I know now that he is the truth. You see Robert once you know the truth nobody can ever take that from you because the truth makes you free. He is the only messiah that performed miracles and was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. He is the only one who died and rose again three days in peace of those that commented the crime. Marcos replied. What does that all mean, Marcos? Robert asked. It means that he loves you. Don't you see why else would he come down from heaven to the belly of hell just to see about you? You are going to be given another chance to get your life right in his sight. Why me? I don't deserve this Marcos. Who am I that he would do this for me? Robert sighs. Why not you? Just realize how beautiful you are to him. Marcos replied. I heard of Jesus, but I don't know his story. Robert questioned Marcos. Governor Pilate charged them by the verdict of the Jewish people sentencing Jesus to death by crucifixion because the Pharisees bear false witness against him. The charges that was brought against him was blasphemy or lying on God. They had to bring Jesus to the Roman government because the people of Judea operated under Rome laws so they could not legally put a person to death. This is why Jesus had to undergo a trial before Governor Pontius Pilate, my mother's friend from the city of Carthage. Jesus was crucified that week paying for the sins of the world and giving man a second chance. In exactly three days he arose and later ascended to the great mercy seat to give a permanent cover for the sins of the world. Marcos said, Wow, now that's love. I didn't know the whole story. Robert replied. Chapter 14 Repentance Jesus took the sins of the world to the cross and paid for them all with his life and all you have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he paid for your sins and was resurrected the third day after. Ask him to save you now because we are here. Marcos said. What do you mean? Robert very bewilderedly asked. Ask for his forgiveness. Marcos replied. Forgiveness for what? Robert asked. Robert looked at the slimy acidic gates of hell and see the city he grew up in New York and he sees the people traveling and its business as usual but not with him. His life has been changed, he feels the spirit of God pulling on him. Then two angels appear as chaos starts to fill Robert's mind distracting him from his decision between life and death. Robert, the angels said to him with a warm smile. Does your soul say yes? Because there is more that he requires of thee. The angels repeated. There is more that he requires of thee. Will your heart and soul say yes? The angels cried as a sound of sweet instruments around where they were. There is more that he requires of thee. We have come to take you higher. The angels replied. Marcos turned his back as if he did not fully finished his mission successfully running back into the darkness of hell readying for engagement. The sound of metal clashing fills the background once more in hell is in its normal subtle evil systems of the underworld again. 
Robert turns back to the two angels quickly as he takes their hands like a little boy walking in the park on a sunny day with mommy and daddy. As he surrenders he walks into the light placing all of his trust in God and not man. Chapter 15 Back Home The black room still mixed with smoke and everybody heavily choking. The children are calling for help as their lungs are filled with the fumes of smog from the burning apartment building. Robert wakes up from the sound of the cries for help and makes his way to them. They are surprised to see him standing over them without choking half to death. He stretches out both hands lifting them up one by one into his arms. Robert turned from a zero to a hero that day and the media went crazy making him a success story cover for NYC News. The headlines read the building looked like something from out of hell. But that didn't stop young Robert Powers from walking closer to that burning building. Because he could feel that somebody was trapped in that apartment compound. Robert single-handed exposed to danger to save the lives of three New York-based children that were surrounded by flames inside the apartment building. Hi, my name is Robert Powers. I'm 16 years old. And up until a few weeks ago, I was living in a juvenile detention facility in Queens, New York. The principal of my school sent me there for being disrespectful to the teacher and fighting in the hallway, he said that it was gang-related. My guardian Miss Davis gave up on me and I don't blame her because I caused her enough grief for one child. Before her I didn't even have a place to stay because my parents were nowhere around. Teachers called me a troubled youth even in elementary school. Funny huh? Now look at me New York's finest junior. League firefighter. All because I said yes to Jesus is Christ. I did it. Now, how about you? 2. B. Continued. Dedication. This book is dedicated to the memories of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Dr. Miles Monroe. May the dreams of you both continue to affect the lives in America. Isaiah Drone III. Would like to say. Thank you and God bless.